What's up guys, Max here in the garage and today I'm going to be showing you how to install this. This is an Enon GA6180F which is the GM specific uh, drop in head unit. This is a 7 inch touchscreen display, it's got a Cortex processor, uh, Gig of DDR3 Samsung RAM and this is equivalent uh, to a 12 or 13 or 1400 dollar Pioneer head unit but this is running a full native Android system. Now Enon's been around for a while but this is their new model that comes with a, a higher resolution screen and a lollipop so Android 5.1.1 I think and so this is actually one of the first ones in the country definitely the first one on YouTube I had to have this shipped overseas they only released these last week the 6 series ones at the time of the shooting they're rolling out 6 series versions for all of their platforms um, and I'm super excited to get this thing in the truck because it represents a ton of value for money. Now, this is not a review video. I'm going to do a separate review video once it's in the truck. I get to learn and play with it a little bit and show you guys some of the quirks. This video will focus predominantly on installation, uh, which is important because this doesn't actually come with any instructions. But it does come with a lot of accessories. So let's talk about some of the things that it comes with. Uh, the first thing you get is this. This is a basic installation tool. You don't really need it, but it is really nice that this comes with it. You have this. This cable offers you two USB ports and a remote microphone if you want it. For conversation, there's actually a microphone built in. It comes with this. This is a micro USB, or I'm sorry, mini USB to a female USB cable. Allows you to plug this in the front and plug the other end into something else. USB remote microphone, standard issue. It comes with this really giant Chinese style remote. Uh, this is an adapter that goes from the back of the unit to a GM style antenna. This, so this is important because all these units are modular. So if I show you guys the back of the head unit, you can see there's no standard RCA ports or anything. It's all these little modular digital outputs. And to take advantage of that, they have their own kind of kit of digital convert breakouts. So there's this guy. Uh, this includes video in, audio in, and basically auxiliary audio and video input. There's this dongle right here, which is all of your extra audio. So you have video one and two out. Uh, you have rear audio out, rear audio in. This is if you want to run a separate amplifier outside of the speakers that are wired in your car. And it's got a single subwoofer output. This is the only thing that's kind of dated. Um, in the past, you would only install, if you had a mono amp like mine, you'd only install the left channel. But because of the way music is today, it's a lot easier to buy one of these. This is two and a half bucks from Walmart. It's an RCA splitter. Basically allows us to pump both channels uh, back to the amp and the amp will combine them. This right here is for the backup camera. It is its own separate little dongle and we're going to wire that in. This right here is the GPS antenna because it's a full Android system. If it has a Wi-Fi connection from a tether on your phone, you can use Google Maps natively and it has its own GPS. This right here is a little beeper. It builds into the CAN bus system, so for the OnStar system, it's a separate beeper that we can install. And then this. This is our CAN bus integration. And what this allows is allows us to plug this end into the back of our head unit. And this, these plugs fit up natively with the truck itself. And that way we can integrate all of the factory speakers, everything in there. Now I bought in addition one of these, which is a backup slash night vision camera that goes uh, over your rear license plate. We're going to be installing this. And due to a promotion they have going on right now, they also sent me this for free. This is one of their backup cameras or dash cams. Um, and we're going to try to install this as a stretch goal in the front bumper. And that way I can, when I'm off-roading, doing whatever, I can have a forward view as well as a backup view. Now, that's pretty much everything that comes in the box. There are no instructions. Literally, the only thing that's included is a wiring diagram here on the top of the head unit. Um, but thankfully I have a considerable bit of experience installing stuff like this and so we're going to be able to get this in the truck I think without too many too many issues. Now it came really well packaged. All of the knobs feel at least GM OEM quality. There's a, a few buttons that don't really make sense like AMS. I don't know what AMS is short for. Um, but we'll figure all of that out once we get it into the truck. Uh, one note on installation, it's got these weird screws on the top of it. It says make sure you remove them before installing. 
Uh, the head unit, I don't know what function they serve, but we will remove them before installing the head unit. Uh, now, to cover costs, I paid $17 for my extra camera. All the rest of this was uh, about $330 shipped here in the States, which makes it about a quarter of a price compared to a standard Android Play or Apple iPlay, or what is it, I whatever, iCar uh, unit. And so, even if we have to do a little futzin, it's going to be totally worth it, and this is much more my style. Now that we're in the truck, uh, here's our kind of shitty entertainment system, and now the first thing you gotta do is you gotta pop out uh, this trim right here. Now this trim piece, you gotta be really careful, because these clips that are on there are really, really strong, and it's a pain in the butt to get them off. So now, we can simply remove our three modules. Now the issue here is you have to get all the screws, because these things overlap each other. And so now you've got a bunch of plugs you just gotta take out yeah, slide this behemoth of a head unit out and so we've got uh, there's our antenna head unit only has two plugs on it and that's it now we can just drop our new head unit in now to install the new stuff you can connect your antenna adapter first set that out of the way now this is the CAN bus this end plugs into our head unit, and two out of these three plugs, so this gray one, this is if you had a uh, touch screen head unit, I think, or if you had the video package, that's what this gray plug is for, because it allows you to hook up, like, if you had the factory drop down uh, video. So that's really all there is to this. Um, this is for our beeper, which will run under the dash. This goes into the head unit. This is for the antenna. Um, and this is auxiliary audio out, which we don't need. So now we can just start adding in all of the extra stuff and running it up here. So there's our beeper connection. All of this stuff plugs into the back of the head unit. Now the hardest part of today's install is this backup camera. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to take out your tail light, uh, which is two screws in here and then it just pops out. And we're going to wire this. This is the power wire for our backup camera. We're going to wire it to the uh, reverse light down there. That way, whenever we turn on reverse, uh, it will send a signal that allows, that takes power from this and it'll turn our camera on. This actually needs to run all the way from the camera up to our head unit. Now, for running the video cable itself, we're going to use this right here. This is the grommet for the vehicle speed sensor, the VSS. And so I just pushed it down through, and now we're going to pull it from the bottom and basically run it alongside the frame rail all the way back to the camera. All right, so let's catch up on what we've accomplished here. This blue wire is for antennas. This truck is antennas always up, but it's a constant 12 volts. So that's going to be running to our subwoof remote switch. I ended up having to use the backup camera that came with this rather than the one I bought separately. The one I bought separately had a bad wire in it. So there's our backup camera install. It basically just runs along the frame all the way in through the grommet I showed you guys. And so that's pretty much it. The actual installation is really pretty easy if you're not having to run all these wires and stuff. And so everything's plugged up. I ended up using the camera dongle and the subwoofer dongle. Um, I've played with it a little bit. It's kind of weird because the subwoofer control doesn't seem to hit very hard. It's just something we're going to have to play with a little bit. But, uh, I mean, this amp should be matched with the subwoofer pretty well. But it's having a real hard time, like, getting a, a lot of bass out of it. I'm getting some, but it's just it's not hitting as hard as I want it to. Uh, which may be an equalizer thing, I don't really know. But all of the uh, remote control, all the uh, steering wheel control stuff works, and so... At this point, I just got to clean up a few more things and get everything kind of uh, put back together. And then I'll show you guys, give you guys a quick showdown of what the uh, actual head unit looks like when it's operational. Well, there we go. There's our unit installed and got it hooked up to Wi-Fi right now from the house. Just uh, getting everything connected. But first impressions are this thing is awesome. Uh, and I mean I got it set up on Bluetooth right now and other than the fact that this Android is a little different you gotta spend a little time figuring out how everything works on it so far I am just absolutely ecstatic with the way this fit and finish there's just a little bit of bucking right here but after playing with it a little bit I got it to fit really nicely now 
I'm gonna do a whole separate video that does nothing but review this unit as a head unit. Uh, this was just an install video, so I hope you guys like this video. Make sure to subscribe, give me a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Peace!